a couple of Hellboy's old foes set out to bring back the Blood Queen, a sorceress, hell-bent, if you will, <laughs> I'm bringing back all the monsters out of the dark and ruling the world. In the meantime, our boy, from hell that is, is on the journey of self-discovery. This is the basic plot to the 2019 quote-unquote reboot, really remake of Hellboy uh, from Neil Marshall. Man, Neil Marshall, uh, I hope this doesn't kill his career because this movie tanked horribly. Yeah, it wasn't good. And Neil's my boy, man. I've always loved Neil's work. You know, Dog Soldiers classic the descent classic centurion a cult favorite doomsday awesome i like the guy man and i was rooting that this would be a cool ass movie and uh, all speculation and rumors said this was a stinker now i knew something was wrong because it seems that almost every criticism centered around the fact that this was not directed by guillermo del toro now you know i love guillermo you himself, you and him, sixty nine on the yeah, daily. It's not good. We love pure, Guillermo. Pure Loja. Yeah, that's a Loja flopping around. We love Guillermo del Toro, and yes, we would have loved to see the end to his trilogy of Hellboy movies, but it just wasn't going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I was disturbed to say the least when everybody just seemed to focus on that, and I smelled a bias in the air. Did you smell a fucking bias in the air? Because I smelled a bias in the air. Uh, that was just my butt. Well, you know, dropping mean, behind the butt. Mean geese all the way up and down the hallway. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much. Now the question is, where are we going to watch this movie? Duh. But all that fucking bad conversation, and really what killed it for me uh, about watching this as soon as possible was the uh, kind of verification from behind the scenes, mostly from Neil Marshall, that, that yeah, there was trouble. Namely because of the production guy, uh, Levin Lloyd, I believe, or Lloyd Levin, I'm sorry. Um, there was just a butting of heads and, and, you know, one guy wanted something and, he, and Neil Marshall wanted another thing. And it it, it, it chimed with what happened uh, with the old Hellboy movies. The same producer and the same kind of incidents has happened between him and Guillermo del Toro. So it made sense. But we were still going to watch this movie. It was just a matter of eventuality. Yeah. We were expecting a, a fuck fest for sure. The question is, how fucked was it gonna get? So now I don't just, know what that means, but okay. <laughs> yeah, we just finished watching this remake, uh, which is it's not a reboot. It's not say. Why don't people know what remake and reboot are? That's yeah. a whole another conversation. This is a remake. It doesn't take place in the same well, universe, so it's not a reboot. Technically, it's a adaptation. Yeah, whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? Damn it. <laughs> The point is, that's what they were using for this shit. Yeah. Reboot. It's not. It has nothing to do with that other universe. Other than the fact that it's based on the same thing. But anyway. We just finished watching this thing. And, uh... What's your reaction, man? Now, to be fair... I did watch this before you. Because I was trying to find a good copy, mainly. This is a legal copy, is what I'm getting at yeah. here. Korean was, uh, copy with lame-ass subs. Let's just say uh, a guy called... Was it shit stutter or something? <laughs> stutter shit. <laughs> Which, and, yeah, really fitting to your uploads, bud. A little stuttery. Stuttery-ass shit. But anyway, uh, well, what's your takeaway, man? Where are you at? Do you know I'm a hell fan? Mm -hmm. Boy, that is, of the yes, films. Yes, boy. Hopefully not uh, the well, damned cavernicolous pits. It's, it's pretty cool down there. Uh, you know, the original movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't read that many comics, but I have read a couple. Mm -hmm. As in, like, the first two or three volumes. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't think this is a good movie, mm -hmm. but I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It's a cool movie. It is a little messy, but it's fun. And that's kind of just what I want, really. I didn't expect the charm of freaking uh, the Guillermo del Toro movies. I didn't get it. I just got a kind of fun, good time. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately what uh, one should expect. You're not going to get... Uh, Guillermo del Toro movie from Neil Marshall. Yeah. Different sensibilities. And just even if it wasn't Neil Marshall, they set out to make a different feeling movie. I will say of the two, this is the one that's most loyal to the comics, but that's not to say that it's something that you could read alongside the comics. But neither was del Toro's. Here's what I don't get. People are beholden to del Toro's vision. Yeah. Uh, I get it because it was cool. But 
but it was not the comic, so I don't understand the slavish devotion to it as if it were yeah. the comics, which is a big thing. Oh, it's not like the comics. The thing about the comics, at least the ones I read, is that they're very, very um, visual. And, yeah. and they're not very story-driven. Uh, literally, like, the first one has, like, three words of dialogue, and the rest is just art, basically. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure that did change as it went along, but... I mean, you kind of have to insert your own little story and your own little flavor, you know what I mean? And that's what yeah. that's what Guillermo did so well in making the characters so likable. So I understand why people are freaking attached to that, because that is probably my favorite Hellboy still, you know, version of him. But yeah, it's not it's not like the comics. So why why shit on a, a new adaptation if it's if the original is not like the comics, yeah. anyway. If if you were going into this expecting something that you know you're not gonna get, then you're a fool from the get go. Yeah. Because you're not gonna get that. It's done. It's over with. So, I went into this expecting, uh, hopefully, an entertaining movie, and that's exactly what I got, in my opinion. Uh, this is a very entertaining movie. Uh, people called it uh, hard to understand. Uh, they said it hopped around everywhere. That it didn't seem to ever stay in place. Uh, I didn't find anything about this remotely confusing at all. Now, I could see someone that's not familiar with the world of Hellboy possibly having a hard time catching up. Because the information does come fast and furious. And this is kind of like the Spider-Man uh, you know, remakes, re- uh, re-adaptations, whatever. They, they let some stuff out there that you already knew. They didn't have to tell you again. Mm-hmm. And even though they didn't take place in the same universe of existence, they they just played off of that. Played off certain things that you just understand as, as a viewer. Which is fair. It's fair game because the people that were going to go view this mostly were people that already saw the original Hellboys and or read the comics. And that's kind of what this is. Now when I say this is more loyal to the comics, I mean it draws more inspiration from the comics than Del Toro's. The Del Toro's Vision was strictly like 50% his, 50% Mignola's. Uh, may, oh, maybe we could give a little leeway in there for production, you know, troubles, nudging him one way or the other. But that was pretty much part one. And part two, I'd say, was like fucking like 70% yeah. Del Toro and like 30% Mignola. This one takes about inspiration from just about every fucking part of the fucking Mignola verse. Of Hellboy, you know, we get parts of the Wild Hunt, we get parts of Darkness Falls, we get some part of Hellboy in Mexico, we get, you know, just little bits and bobs, uh, little elements of Seed of Destruction thrown in there, you know, uh, it takes everything, it takes all these little elements that eventually tied up in the comics and, you know, just kind of brought them out and did this one story over here, you know, along the way setting up stuff for possible installments in the future, which are not going to happen, uh, but you know, not in a way where, like, you know, kind of like the mummy did, where you're like, Well, that was pointless. Yeah, no, it was feeding into what was going on at the same time, leaving some, uh, some open doors just in case, you know. Uh, it did, it's a, it is a movie that, uh, doesn't really lead you by the hand to the, from the beginning like you're expected to understand certain things i.e that the enemies introduced at the beginning are just old foes for example uh you're expected to understand that the bprd is a part of this world they don't reintroduce you to all these things uh so you know people might have trouble with that me i didn't i don't know did you no it is mostly like you said since it does pick and choose from all these different things I do feel that it does feel a little messy at times. Uh, it's not confusing. I was never confused. It's just it, it does jump around a little too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, it after a while it does get a little tiring. I, I never got annoyed, and I was never like, "This sucks," but it is something that I that I was like, eh, "It's a, l- a little bit messy." Um, but ultimately, it does end up making sense, and it does go somewhere so it's not like it's pointlessly doing that you know what i mean so i can't complain i'm gonna put i'm gonna put it out there like this if you're if you don't have an attention span don't watch this movie or maybe watch this movie well, yeah it's not uh, no freaking rocket science you know? no no i'm saying don't watch this movie because i mean 
story wise with movies like this you get them expo- from exposition yeah so maybe if you're an attention lack of attention span guy that just likes watching shit happen then yeah i guess you'd enjoy this but if you want a story you need to pay attention because it does come at a breakneck pace um this jumping around thing i'm gonna be on the opposite uh, spectrum of you i didn't find it numbing uh, i will say that maybe if you're tired maybe if you're annoyed uh or if it's just not your jam it, it might be numbing to you you know because it, it does come fast and intense um you know from scene to scene action spot to action spot um you know but i, I dug it man you know what i'm saying i, I dug where it was going it never lost me everything is tied to the storyline it's not like you're just throwing shit out which is a thing that i read in several reviews that they're just throwing shit out there uh well there's action set pieces for sure and uh, i mean it goes kind of hand in hand with hellboy he globe trots he you know they they discover the adventure as they go that's the thing like even though i do have a kind of like an issue with how it feels that is what it what hellboy does yeah i mean so i can't like i said i can't really complain it's just at times it does feel a little weird uh but that's what it is so yeah ultimately what won me over was that i thought that while del toro's is the movie with more heart about his origin obviously that's del toro he knows how to soften a monster up uh this one is the more um crass version of that doesn't lose its heart though uh it's just presenting it in a different way and and here's what won me over this is what i was getting to that it keeps what's important about hellboy the idea of nature versus nurture uh choice versus fate that's what this entire storyline is about which if you're going to represent Hellboy, that's a way to do it. And they didn't have to retread, you know, what uh, Del Toro did. They just did it with the Blood Queen instead. Um, and it worked. It tied in. And it used elements from the comics to do that, which was pretty awesome. But anyway, give me anything you got, man. Negative, positive. Uh, I got a weird positive. All right. I really like the pig guy. <laughs> uh, pig guy was like my favorite character in this movie. I don't know why. Kind of wanted to pet um, him. Yeah, he's really a tragic character. <laughs> uh, just ultimately gets killed, and you're like, "Oh, little pig guy." Uh, so yeah, pig guy is the unsung hero of this movie. <laughs> Hashtag. Pig Hashtag guy save raps. that pig guy. Yeah. Um, now I, I'm gonna give you like a double-edged sword here, and that's the effects work in this. This is an effects-heavy movie, uh, from point A to Z. It's just effects coming at you. And as you might expect from a movie that is not exactly the highest of budgets, you know, there's no Transformer shit going on here, no Transformer money being thrown around here, Uh, you know, not all the effects are going to work. I will say that the majority of the effects worked for me, uh, but there are ones that will not work for, like, anybody on the planet. Uh, You know, some floating head syndrome a la the Avengers. There's, there's like, um, they're in, like, the giant fight in the beginning. There's a lot of pretty bad like grass textures and very obvious green screen but he's fighting giants so what why are you gonna freaking complain about it it's fine for the most part it's fine the effects, yeah you know? I, I i love the effects in this movie for the for like 85 percent of the movie there was some really creative stuff especially when hell is unleashed pretty awesome i guess maybe they use the same guys that worked on hellboy 2 because some of the designs were very reminiscent of that stuff or in Hellboy 1 and 2. Um, uh, the Baba Yaga, you know, yeah. there was just some really cool... It's, it's At times it's clear what they were kind of putting their time and effort into. Mm-hmm. Like the hell stuff and the, the shit going down, you know, with all the creatures and shit. That looked really good. And, and the Baba Yaga looked really good. And other stuff looks a little not as good. But, again, not a massive budget. So, it's to mm-hmm. be expected, I would say. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I was uh, like almost, uh, completely satisfied with the effects with the exception of like the occasional floating head, uh, Ian McShane's yeah, that was bad. ectoplasm ghost was not good. And considering there was a good version of it in the movie, you're like, dude, come on. It's the, like the last shot in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, not the last, but an important shot in the movie. Get, give him the better effects. It's like I could do that effect um so yeah effects are gonna be like uh give or take at times but for the most part i'd say they're successful personally speaking give me uh anything 
I think um, even though it's a very different Hellboy, I think he's pretty good as Hellboy. I don't know his name. David Harbour? Yeah. I think he did a pretty good job as Hellboy. I think at times he was a little too loud. Um, you know, a little too excitable. But that was kind of cool also to see like a different kind of... He's more a little more childlike in this. And, and that was kind of cool. Um, obviously, you're not going to match the Ronster. But uh, he didn't really try to. He was doing his own thing. And he was pretty cool. I liked him. And I think even then it chimes with what's there before. There's nothing that, you know, not to insinuate that Hellboy's an inviolate fucking character, but there's nothing that flies in the face of Ron Perlman's interpretation either. Like, yeah. if you wanted to, you could watch these movies back to back and there would be nothing incredibly jarring that would make you go, ah. Yeah. He, he this, is what I, this is what's important. He brought Hellboy to life in one respect, whereas Perlman brought him to life in another respect. So they're all ultimately both Hellboy-esque. Hellboys. So yeah, you know, uh, it works. Like you say, it works. Uh, he gave it his own stank, if yeah, you will. Yeah, he was definitely a little less, like, quick on the... Uh, a little less quick on the quip. But, like, like he gave it his own... Feel. I think I, ultimately that was more of a Perlman thing. Yeah, honestly. Than anything. Yeah. yeah, you know. we. I'd say of the two Hellboys, this one's closer to the comic. Uh, in the way he behaves. It's just Perlman is a more likable help with yeah. uh you know so take that one with that or i like both of them so there you go yeah he was pretty cool I, I would say i will say that the makeup though kind of iffy in the previews in my opinion it looked fine in the movie never was i like boo uh there's like like a couple shots where his tail looks super fake and like you know a little bit of the loha shows but it doesn't look bad. I was expecting it to be really annoying because I didn't like it. In the... I like the bodysuit a lot more in this. It looks I fine, like, yeah. I like the hand more in the Del Toro movies. Yeah, I don't like the hand in this. Um, but I end up, you know, not that I'm going to shit on the movie for the hand. It's just no. the design thing. I mean, it's the same look, kind of. Except yeah. so this one's a little bit more... Um, angular? Yeah, angular. Uh, I just like the hand more than the other ones. Um... The Anangun Rama design was super cool in this, so I don't know where I stand on that. And the tail, uh, I don't know, I kind of preferred this one, even though it's just kind of limp. Yeah. Because sometimes the CGI tail in the was, first one was like, uh. There was one, man, I wish, kind of wish I hadn't noticed this, but there was like one one bit where he's fighting, I don't know, one of the big things at one point. And uh, there's a lot of big things he fights in this, <laughs> so it's just one of them. And uh, the tail kind of bends, and you can kind of see the seam of the tail. It's like, oh man, the white seam. Um, but yeah, it is very limp in this. But uh, yeah, at least they didn't super CGI it, I guess. So. Yeah. And it's a natural limpness, not like my penis. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, look at my peen or what? I mean, Gross. It's hanging out right now. It's not great. It's red, too. Just because I'm not wearing pants doesn't mean you have to look. But anyway, uh, give me something else, man. You got it. <clears throat> I think. Mm. I like the team. They were cool. Yeah, uh, again, a big stank was made about the fact that they weren't using Ape Sapien yeah, and, and, and Liz. But uh, you know what? And this, again, this, this is just pissing me off now. It's become a fucking thing where people think that they know the fuck is going on just because they saw a movie, they think they know the comics. And that would become blatantly fuck. These characters are in the comics, people. So all those people that were writing these reviews where they're like, oh, I want these fucking people. For Come on, man. These are people are in the fucking comics. Anyway. Uh, yes, I'm with you. I like this team quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, again, yes, it's kind of like a... like a, uh, it's a it's a calculated move to use somebody else. Yeah. And it could have fallen was. flat, but it didn't, thankfully. It, it would have kind of been unwise there was already a lot going against the movie in the audience eyes would have been unwise to bring mm -hmm. the old characters people like or people like because they didn't see yeah to rub movie. it in more that yeah. this yeah so they did a wise thing here by bringing in alice and and uh uh well, i always forget his name man die soon i forgot his name but anyway okay. uh uh if you like your professor broom nice this is not nice professor broom <laughs> And then again, you know, again, Del Toro's version of him wasn't exactly a hundred percent the way it was. But this is Ian McShane being the Ian McShane version of Professor Broom, which means he, he cusses on occasion too. Uh, but 
Uh, this I could see being a problem for some people. Uh, I kind of like this. Uh, it played off well with the whole, you know, more childish Hellboy. Yeah. And the themes of, you know, the themes that were going on with the idea of, you know, him versus, uh, him, uh, kind of going against his nature versus how he was raised, which again goes back to that big theme that's always in the Hellraiser. I mean, I'm sorry, in the Hellboy, uh, origin, uh, shtick. So I really kind of actually enjoyed this different rapport between them uh surprisingly I, I, when the when broom kind of narrates the intro i was like i don't think i'm gonna like him but you know i did end up liking that so that was pretty cool too and there are nods to uh, fans of the comics that are might be a little bit more in jokey again that stuff might be stuff that loses a casual viewer you know like uh, the Lobster Johnson thing. Casual mm. viewer might be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Who is this yeah, guy? Yeah, I could see that being kind of weird for uh, someone. However, for someone that's read the comic, that's super fucking cool. Um, I don't know how you liked it. Uh, I like the fact that at the end, that during the mid credit sequence, they brought the ghost version in and set up the idea that maybe he would be in the sequels, which we're not going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, which is cool because the ghost Lobster Johnson is, you know... Kind of a fucking thing that would be awesome to see. But anyway, uh, there there's moments of fan service like that. Uh, lots of them, especially in terms of, you know, stuff that's just kind of mentioned in passing. Like the, the, the three witches. The and, eye you know, thing. Yeah, the eye thing, uh, et cetera. You know, there's, there's a lot of little stuff like that that fans might recognize and see how they're laying little groundwork and stuff like that. So I enjoyed all that quite a bit. Um Here's something that I'm kind of iffy on, and I don't mean iffy in a bad way. I mean, sometimes it worked, and sometimes I was like, eh, I wish there was not this, and that's the score. And by score, I mean soundtrack, mm. which is mostly what populates this movie, uh, the soundtrack selections. Some of them I really liked, like just using Alice Cooper was cool, because, you know, He's somebody old. needs to listen to something yeah. besides Dada, apparently. Dude, I'm a Dada fan. What are you talking about? Um... So that's cool, and uh, you know, like that fucking uh, 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 "Rocky Like a Hurricane" in Spanish version. Mm. And that's cool. You know, there's stuff that fits in very well with what's going on, and then there's stuff that you're like, oh, "Come on, you could have used like a little score there. It would have been cooler than this." Uh, but I'm inclined more to like it than not. Uh, although I do prefer scores in general, so you know, I don't know where y'all land on that, but kind of like. I'm okay with it. It was all it right. It was cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it went with the spirit of the movie. I was, I was, I was surprisingly <clears throat> fine with a Motley Crue song being in something. So that's impressive, um, because they suck. In case you're wondering. Yeah. So oh, they uh, suck. I got two two uh, pros, and that'll be my last pros. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, uh, they managed to bro- to put in the Hellboy jump <laughs> in there when he jumps down during his vision of hell. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, you know, that's one of those little things I pop for. Stupid, but yep. cool. And, uh, oh, okay, okay, well, I'll get to that. And, uh, the final massive pro, the best thing in this movie, got a lot of hags. Hag galore. Um, and specifically, my girl, Baba Yaga, gets some love. Any movie that has Baba Yaga has got, like, a thumb up at least. Yeah. And I gotta say, I was digging this Baba. This Baba's weird. This Baba's got floppy tits. And it's got a cool-ass face. That was a pretty cool design. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was, like, mostly practical. If it looked pretty... Mm-hmm. It didn't look like CG for the most part. Obviously. A lot of the major effects were kind of a mix of both. Yeah, Which like the pig cool. guy. Yeah, yeah, the pig guy looked really cool. Um, so, yeah, Baba's scene was pretty rad. Every time there's a chicken leg house fully realized in film, uh, I'm going to at least give it a... Free, at least... At least a six. That's like a guarantee. <laughs> the Baba Yaga guarantee. At least a fucking six. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was cool. And like, like I said, Pig Guy is like one of my favorite characters in this movie for some reason. <laughs> some of the creatures are cool is what I'm saying here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those are my two pros. I do think that this movie, uh, for for I'm taking it from your response, uh, for people like you, um, had this movie allowed, it seems, to breathe a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it would have been more palatable. Um, as it is, it's running at like two hours, really like an hour and 15 minutes because it's got some long-ass credits. Yeah. But, uh, I'm sorry, an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, but, you know, it's marking at like the two-hour mark with credits. 
uh, had it allowed its scenes to breathe a little, and we're living in an age when fucking three-hour movies are normal. Yeah. You know, then the pace would have been not as as breakneck, not as, uh, you know... I don't know, man. It, it comes at you fast. Is yeah. What it, it, like I said, it, it's it's never like... It never turned me off for anything, but it is something that a li- is a little bit tiring towards, like, the middle, where, yeah, it, it is really fast, and... It's not like it's hard to follow or anything. It's just, like you said, it would be nice if there was like some scenes where just people chilling out, petting cats or something. It's not even that. It's like, again, it's the, I mean, they don't have to be chilling out or petting cats. <laughs> Eating nachos. It would be nice, but they don't have to do that. It's just literally, there is no rest in this yeah. movie. You're, you're up in the adventure and going through it either through the good guy's point of view or the bad guy's point of view always in the mix they intertwine and there's never like a moment for you to just stop um sometimes that moment becomes hell like an aquaman Mm. just an inadequately and well just downright shitty way to handle that moment of respite um but sometimes it's handled incredibly well you know Uh, i could cite an example but the moment i do people are gonna be like nah that's bad but for the most part, a moment of respite in the movie is very useful. Um, here, a little moment here and there would have been nice, you know, yeah. because it is it does come at an alarming rate at you. And you're either going to be up for that or you're not, which is why I think if you didn't enjoy this movie the first time, 100%, you did like it, but you didn't enjoy it 100%, I rewatch it. I rewatched this the first time I watched it. Um, Kind of watched it in, in two parts, because you know in the mid in the halfway hour around the thirty five minute mark, I had to re-download it because that first copy woo stinkier. Mm. Um, so I had a respite moment there, a little break and intermission, and I came back and watched it, and uh, I had kind of a feeling that you're having, but I I liked the movie still. Mm. Uh, I liked it a lot. In fact, as as per my response earlier, um, when you know we were out and talking about it. Uh, upon second viewing where I just sat straight through it I liked it even more Um, because uh, let me just finish this thought real quick because all the stuff that just bombards you the first time around you just know it the second time around it's kind of like Suicide Squad like you know shit's happening so yeah so it's not that you're missing stuff it's not that you don't get although I still don't get why the people are like I don't get it it's not confusing it's not confusing at all so if if that was keeping you away those people saying it's it's confusing then those people are fucking dumb or something the only thing I can see someone thinking it's confusing is that it does kind of have that like you said that breaknecky pace yeah and maybe that gave you like the illusion that it's confusing but it's not but it's not I mean it's like freaking it's not like a deep movie here yeah it's like, just, let me punch the bad guy it's a fantasy adventure movie <laughs> yeah. with lots of action nothing intense here it's not gonna win an academy award not one floor with a cuckoo's nest or something yeah. uh so i don't get that at all yeah but yeah it does bombard you with tons of information that upon second viewing you're just you just know it already so it's even more enjoyable so consider that but anyway uh, unless you got any other thoughts or not Final thoughts and a score on a scale 1 to 10. Give it to me. Uh, I gotta say, they're gonna make like a pig guy solo film, uh, a Baba Yaga spin off. And uh, we're never gonna get a sequel, so that sucks. Yeah. Um, Unfortunate. Yeah, I think this will improve when I watch it again because we did watch a stuttery copy, and you know, just like you said, you just kind of, it, it's gonna help with the pace when you watch it again. That being said, I did enjoy it. It's a fun movie. It's not a great movie, but it's a fun movie. Um, I'll give it like a 7. There's room for improvement, but mm-hmm. it was way better than I thought it was going to be. And yeah, I don't understand why people think it's confusing. Yeah. Um, this uh, kind of surprised me. I ended up enjoying this a lot more, especially considering all the uh, than I thought, especially considering all the negative buzz this got. I do think it's unfairly maligned. I think this is going to be a movie that that has a cult following down the road. I think this is going to be a movie that these actors are going to get talk, uh, told about a lot down the road. Like, mm. hey man, when's the next one? Or I wish this would have had a next one or something. Uh, I know they're all down on their luck, but I, I mean down on, on the whole movie as a whole. Except the for experience. Uh, Mila. 
Except for Mila. Apparently. And you know what? Mila knows what's up. Mila knows that sometimes big, stupid fun is exactly that. And this is big, stupid fun, but it's not stupid in, in an insulting way like the Resident Evil movies. Um, it's stupid in a way that it's still kind of honoring its source material. And, yeah, it does uh, very, feel very much like a comic book. Yeah. Uh, visually exciting and uh, uh, action-packed, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, it costs it some of its uh, credibility because of that. Uh, but for the most part, very enjoyable. Uh, comment by surprise, I'm going to give this a surprise rating of 8. Does it deserve a rating of 8 in terms of its story and stuff like that? No, of course not. Uh, but in my opinion, neither do the original Hellboy movies. You know, sue me. I mean, the, the sumo wrestler. <laughs> it's, your, it's just a matter of how much you like it's them. It's catchphrase now. It's just a matter of how much you like them. And I like this almost as much as I like those movies. It's just a different uh, taste of it. So, uh, there you go, you know. Who knew? Who knew that I would enjoy it that much? But anyway, let us know what you think about this movie. Don't stay away from it just because of some other jackass said. Even if you don't enjoy this, at least formulate your own opinion about it, which was ultimately our real goal, other than the fact that we're obviously going to watch yeah. a Hellboy movie. Even if it's I, I even told you this past week, I bet you we're going to like it. Yeah, yeah, you did. You just have that stank of people pooping on something for no reason. Yeah, um... Yeah, the only thing that had me thinking that I wasn't going to like it was the producer thing. Because mm. you know that a Kiva Goldsman-like fucking hold can destroy a movie, Dark Tower style. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, Lloyd Levin apparently had a little bit of that. A little bit. You know, there's a little stank going on there. But, uh, hey man, who knows, maybe one day we'll get a director's cut of this and then see how that goes. We don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Point is, we won't be getting sequels. <laughs> Definitely not. But uh, let us know what you think about that. Uh, kind of sad that we won't be getting sequels. But anyway, tell us what you think. Hit like, share, subscribe to the notification buttons because we're out.